everybody, Kyle Sasser here, and it's everybody's favorite time of the month. That's right, market statistics time. These market statistics are for Pinellas County for the month of October 2021. So here we are, sitting in the uh, in the midst of November here, getting pretty close to Thanksgiving. Uh, you might notice that I've put a coat on. It There's a little bit of a chill in the air now, <laughs> so definitely need to, need to layer up a little bit here. Um, but let's talk real estate market stats. Now, uh, the thing to note with these statistics are is that these are year over year. So we're not comparing month to month. Um, and the reason why we do that is because uh, there is a natural ebb and flow over the course of 12 months to the real estate cycle. Uh, some months are naturally uh, just fewer homes get sold in those months. Um, it seems to be tied to the uh, school year down here. But if you're watching this from up north, you'd probably be more familiar with, um, you know, winter time. <laughs> We're not not a lot of people out and about looking at houses in the winter time. So we compare year to year. So we are comparing October 2021 to October 2020. Now the other thing you're probably asking is if we're in the middle of November, why are we looking at October numbers? And the answer to that is it just takes a little bit of time for the local real estate board to get these numbers together, get them assembled in a beautiful report here, which you can download, by the way, there is a, um, you know, there is a download link um, down below or on this page. So you can download this and go along with me, but it takes them a little bit of time to put the information together and get it into this beautiful, beautiful report and into my hands. So without further ado, let's dive into these numbers. If you've been watching for the last few months, you know that we have had a little bit of a market shift um, developing and that shift has continued to solidify in the current month's numbers uh, the thing to know is this is not an immediate change um, real estate just it takes a while for that stuff to work out um, everyone kind of knows currently that we are in a inventory shortage so there's just not many houses for sale the root of this shortage started last uh, June um, so basically what happened was COVID hit in March, th everything stopped in April, and then end of May to June, all of the buyers came back, primarily from up north and other parts of the country. So the demand came back, but people were still deciding not to sell their houses, which resulted in fewer houses for sale. With the same amount of demand, prices have to go up. Uh, just It's simple supply and demand stuff. So <clears throat> the last few months, we've definitely had a new trend starting, which is more houses coming up for sale than are actually selling. Uh, so long term, um, you know, prospects are good, but immediate, immediately the market is not going to change that much. But let's jump into these numbers. So total number of closed sales is down 4.4% for a total of 1,180 homes. Total homes paid in cash was up 18.8% to a total of 418. The thing with that is a lot of buyers have been leveraging cash, either just cash that they have saved or they're liquidating stocks to help them put their best offer forward uh, to get an offer accepted because we have so few houses for sale here. So uh, the paid in cash historically has been more of an indicator of um, uh, like the number of investment properties getting sold. But in this case, it is definitely a clear indicator of uh, just people being driven to buy a house here. <laughs> Median sales price is up 13.7%, which is not a shock uh, to $369,450. And the average sales price is up 5.7% for a total of $477,000. Now, for those of you that may, uh, may not remember, um, average is where you take um, a number of homes, let's say five, you take the sales price for those five homes, you divide it by five, and that gives you an average. Median is a little bit different. That would be where you would take, say, 20 houses, and the median is the point where there is a, an equal number of houses for sale at a higher price point and an equal to an equal number of homes for sale for a lesser price point. Personally, I prefer median sales price to average, just because average can be swung pretty hard if a especially um, 
large number of very expensive homes sell in a given month or an especially large number of lower priced homes. Um, it can definitely pull that average number down. Total dollar volume, which is how much total real estate has been sold for the month of October was $563 million. Median time to contract has held no change, 10 days. 10 days is the median time to contract for a single family home in Pinellas County. And the median time to sale, which is the closing, is a little bit shorter. It's down from 51 days to 47 days, which is a change of 7.8%. Now, the number of new listings. This one's a little deceptive, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I'm seeing here. So the number of new listings compared to last year is actually down. Um, it is down 16.3% for a total of $1,221. And the total inventory is also down 27.5% to a total of 1,196. However, we need to go back to a previous stat here. So the number of new listings was 1,221. So that's the number of homes that were put up for sale. The total number sold was 1,180. So it is a small, <laughs> that is a small move but it's actually more than it was last month um, because last month I believe it was uh, 20 if I remember correctly and now we're at about uh, what would that be like 40 yeah so now we have 40 more houses and so you can see <clears throat> it things are kind of building that way again it's slow and definitely 20 houses out of almost 1200 is not a huge percentage but it is a change because over the last few years the trend has been more houses sold than have gone up for sale, which is, and especially in the last 12 months. And that's why we've been crunched so hard here. And I'm actually going to, um, so they also give us charts here for just the number change. There's one chart that I'm going to show that actually illustrates that change that's happened. Obviously having 27.5% fewer houses total compared to last year, which was already a uh, pretty constricted <laughs> market. Uh, definitely not optimum if you are looking to buy, but honestly, uh, the, the, I'm glad the stats are backing me up because anecdotally, I've been noticing things hanging around a little bit longer, things seeming to, to be chilling out a little bit. Um, again, prices are not going down by any stretch of the imagination, but what's happening is we are not going as gangbusters um, as we were. Um, the probably the best way to describe it is we're we're currently kind of leveling out a little bit. If if some of those numbers drastically change, like it could go either way. Currently, that's currently the real estate market's trying to figure out which way it wants to go. Um, and again, 20, <laughs> 20 or forty houses is not enough to make a huge dent in this. Uh, but if if that changes, I'll be sure to let you know. Now, the one thing I want to show you that's interesting is uh, this chart for uh, inventory active listings. So this is the total number of active listings. So if we look at, <clears throat> historically, we can go through here and we can see that it's the overall long-term trend has been down. And then, uh, you know, June, July, August, September is usually the low point. If we look at 2021 though, our June, July, August, September, and October has actually been where we've had the most inventory available. So that's that that change that that I'm saying, like it's it's a market trend and it's small, <laughs> but it's doable. Um, February, March, April, May, we were actually below 1,000 homes total. Uh, whereas now we're back up in that 1,100, 1,200 um, uh, mark. And historically we've been around like 3,000, 2,500-ish. So uh, you can see we're definitely we're definitely low, but you know we're, the inventory seems like it's on a, some sort of trend now. Uh, like I want to hope it's an upward trend because honestly it's pretty hard out there for buyers. I I definitely feel for y'all. Now one <clears throat> one thing I definitely want to do is dive into the um, the numbers by price point because a you know one or two million dollar house is going to sell in a little bit different time frame than a $200,000 or $300,000 house. And again, these numbers are heavily skewed because the, the prices have changed so much in the last, uh, last 12 months. Remember, our 
median sales price is up 13.7% uh, from 325 to 369. So what the price point numbers show is basically um, on the surface, you would think there is a whole lot more, um, you know, like $300,000 houses and more that are around now, which is true. But the reason why is not because we've magically built, um, you know, a bunch of <laughs> 300, 400, $500,000 houses, but just in that 12 months, prices have slid up so fast that, um, you know, homes that would have sold for like 250, 260, 270 last year have now moved up into a, like a, like a 320, 330, 340 category. And that's true across all, all price points. Every, everything is, is, is up. So, so there's a pretty hard split at 300,000. So everything below 300,000, there's a lot less of, and more than 300,000, there's a lot more of. So, for example, 150 to 200,000 is down 58.8% to 35. 200 to 250,000 dollars is down 44.2% to 106. Um, moving to that 300 number, 300 to 400,000 dollars <throat> is up 22.3% uh, to 334. And 400 to 600,000 is up 21.5% to 294. And then 600 to a million is up 16% to 138. And again, this is a, that's total number. That's total homes sold in each price point. Median time to contract. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this. Suffice to say, it's basically 15 days or less <laughs> is the median time for a house to be on the market, active for sale, and then receiving an offer. Uh, some of them are definitely more. Some of them are definitely less. One thing I have noticed is that um, you know, I think that number is going to be changing pretty significantly soon. Um, and I see that a little bit in like the 150 to 200 mark. Um, so the interesting thing is that this number has actually ticked up for many price points. And the reason why is because we had such a hard acceleration in prices. Sellers, uh, like someone selling their home naturally wants to get the most money possible for it. So, you know, they go for a high number and then they have to back off of it a little bit. So the median time to contract between 200 and 400,000 is actually up, meaning it's going, it's taking longer now to sell a home in that price point than it was a year ago. Um, and it's, you know, it's still a short time period compared to three years ago. Um, Cause they're hanging around like 11 days, three days, uh, 13 days, 12 days. But the, uh, the difference is, is, you know, six months ago, that was hanging around like five, six days, <laughs> which is ridiculously fast. Total number of new homes going up for sale. Again, we have a hard line at 300,000. So less than 300,000, there is a significantly fewer number amount of homes. So 250 to $300,000 is actually down 34.5% for a total of 165. 300 to 400 thousand dollars is down 7.4 percent. So 300 is that 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 changing point. So uh, 300 to 400 is down 7.4 percent to 325, and then at 400 to 600 thousand, we're actually up 16.6 percent for a total of 330, and then 600 to a million, we're actually up 19.1 percent for a total of 168. I do wish that the the realtor organizations would adjust these price points. Because the under fifty thousand and the fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollar price points are ineffective so far as reporting goes. <laughs> there was one in each category, and then we have total inventory by current list price, and those are all down across the board, which matches up with the fact that our total inventory is down. Um, some a little bit more than others. Obviously, the under three hundred thousand dollar mark are taking the hardest hit right now. Um, so 150 to $200,000 total available is actually down 57.6% total of 50 homes. 200 to 250 is down 57.2%. 250 to 300 is down 41.8%. So you can see if, if you're looking for a house under $300,000, it's still hard going. 300 to $400,000 is only down 11.3% for a total of 263. And 400 to 600,000 is down 19.2% for a total of 253. Um, so not as much pain there. Um, and again, we are still having more houses go up for sale than are selling. Not many, <laughs> but it's a change. 
And then finally we have what I like to call the doom and gloom page. Uh, so this is gonna be short sales foreclosures, bank owned properties. Um, we have had that moratorium in effect due to COVID for a very long time. And so these numbers are suppressed. Um, so, much, <laughs> so much so that there is a crazy swing on the chart. I don't know if you can see this, but that blue line there, <laughs> it just spikes. Um, so that's what happens when you only have like a handful. So the number of foreclosures in Pinellas County, there was a total of four, which is a 70% drop. Short sales, there was a total of one, which was a reduction of 80% compared to last year. And that outlier is the change in the median sales price. So, uh, so short sale is when the property owner owes more on the house than uh, the house is worth. And so they have to negotiate with the bank for a short sale, meaning that the proceeds of sale is going to be short of the ability to pay off the mortgage. So the median sales price last year was 255,000 and, and there was five, there was five short sales last October, um, median sales price 255. This year there was one at $1.475 million. <laughs> so that's why that chart, that's why that chart is zoop. All right, so let's uh, let's pack all that that up a little bit into a nice little little bundle here. So the trend of more inventory coming on the market is holding. Um, it's slight. In the case of Hillsborough County, we've had more. Uh, in the case of Pinellas County, it's slight, but it is something. Um, it's definitely some improvement so far as home inventory goes compared to the previous uh, you know few years. Now, how long is that going to take to really have an impact on the market? Uh, the answer is it's going to be a while, <laughs> uh, barring other uh, unfore unforeseen catastrophic circumstances. Um, it's going to take a long time for all that to build up. So it's not going to be any immediate change. Um, if you've been considering selling your home, now's the time. Prices are definitely not um, accelerating hard. Um, and if anything, it's uh, so prices haven't really gone down that much. But what I've seen is that um, the only ones that are really getting that high amount of demand are ones that are um, fully renovated, like top of the line in a great neighborhood, uh, which has always been the case. Like those have always been high demand properties. Um, the difference was was between uh, February and you know June, July was that even homes that maybe weren't in a great neighborhood or you know needed a, a good amounts of updating and work those were also generating a large amount of demand just because we were we were had so few houses for sale like we usually have like 2000 3000 homes and there was a stretch there where we were under 1000 total homes for sale which is bonkers meanwhile the number of buyers has held the number of buyers held steady recipe for prices shooting up so immediate changes, probably not much. There's a little light at the end of the tunnel if you're a buyer um, in that there's going to be, there should steadily be a few more homes available to choose from, which is good. And yeah, as always, I'm going to, as always, I'm going to keep an eye on the stats that come out and I will bring you that information as well. My name is Kyle Sasser. Uh, it's coming to you from Keller Williams, St. Petersburg, located in downtown St. Pete. I do cover the entire Tampa Bay area. Um, I have sold all the way north in Spring Hill, south to Sarasota, um, Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater, Dunedin, Safety Harbor, Brandon, Plant City. I have lived, worked, or sold a house in basically any neighbor, almost every neighborhood um, in the Tampa Bay area. If you would like help buying a home or if you have been thinking about selling your own house, maybe you're looking to relocate to another part of the area or out of state, or if it's a rental home and you think now's the time to cash in, I would love to help you out, answer any questions that you have. You can reach me at 727-300-2111. Uh, there's some additional contact information down below if you'd rather do email or, uh, I mean, you can even send me a postcard. I <laughs> if you send me a postcard, I promise I would, I would respond to you. <laughs> Um, other than that, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any comments or questions or anything, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And other than that, I'll talk to you soon.